you ever feel when you're programming that there are just an overwhelming amount of options available when it comes to programming short strings? It can be quite intimidating actually, simply because there are so many. How do you know which articulation to choose and what the difference is between this one that sounds just like this one? Well, in this episode, that's what we're gonna be focusing on. But luckily, I've got some help. So now we're joined in the studio by our wonderful cellist, Clara. Well, today we're going to sort of travel uh, internally around the world of short notes on a string oh, instrument. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess we'd start at the short end. What's <laughs> the shortest note that you can make on a cello, for example? Maybe something like that. Is that already a note? <laughs> yeah, it's about as short as it gets, yeah. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm sort of watching, this is already coming down and bouncing on the string. Mm -hmm. So this is a spiccato, right? Yes. A very soft and very short one, right? Yes. <laughs> um, but do they get longer spiccatos or... I mean... If I said the word spiccato to you, what does it, what does it mean to play it? I mean, spiccato just means that it's bouncing, that I start from here and... I just yeah drop the bow. <laughs> but does that mean as well that there's there's sort of less control of this? You just have gravity producing a note almost. Yeah, kind of. And I mean that's what makes it difficult. Like of course you still need to control the bow, right? You can yeah. just like <laughs> <laughs> drop it completely. But like if you hold it too much, it doesn't work. Like you know. It... So it's quite. So there's limitations to it, really. Like maybe how fast it can go or. I mean, it can get pretty fast, actually. Like, let me try. And then now that's yeah. tremolo, right? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, and also, it can't get loud, right? Because of the the dropping of it, it's you can't yeah. produce a loud note. That's true. Also, because the um, bow head only touches the string for, I mean, right. barely touches the string, so. Open strings always sound very yeah. <laughs> loud, but... It's, also, it's limited. It, it, yeah, it feels limited there. It looks kind of awkward to constantly bounce yeah. as well, like you wouldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, as long as it's kind of soft. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, as composers who use samples, not only do we stick um, articulations into sort of small boxes like spiccato <laughs> and staccatissimo and so, so on, when we, we put our sort of articulations into boxes, yeah. I think we mostly do it based on length, right? So we always assume <laughs> that a spiccato is the shortest and then our next one would be something like a staccatissimo or staccato short and then staccato mm. and then marcato and so on. But uh, presumably you don't ever see this kind of stuff written on a page for you. You just see no. notes with dots on. Exactly, yeah, never. And then it's my job to figure <laughs> out how I translate it to <laughs> yeah. music. Kind of. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I guess something like a staccatissimo, like you would ne we would never communicate that word to you ever. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it actually. Yeah, not, not, not even like in a book or something. Or, what kind of book? <laughs> I don't know, like a study book. I don't know. No. no. I mean, so we just like, made it up. Back Someone then, when I was seven, I think I learned staccato at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But ever since then, like we talk about, yeah, I don't know, articulation or the effect, and then um, it's our job to figure out how to solve it technically okay but we don't really use those terms a lot maybe a conductor could say something like yeah i play more staccato staccatissimo but it's not so common okay so we have to kind of i guess go backwards from samples and remember that um a real instrument has a kind of gradient of yeah. how you can articulate a note and how long That's or true. short it can be and we kind of have to I don't know how it works, really. We kind of just fit back in the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we don't think in boxes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. We shouldn't either, but we sometimes have to. Yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about on the string versus off the string. So mm -hmm. a spiccato is uh, off the string, a staccato is on the string. Uh, but are there other kind of 
examples of, of these uh, off the string things? Yeah, they could be um, ricochet, for example, okay. um, which is also bouncing, but I don't change the like direction. Basically, okay. this, and then I can try to control it. <laughs> A really like cool that. sound, yeah. Yeah, it's also uh, fun to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then on the string, it's just presumably everything that requires contact first, right? So yeah, yeah. Every so everything thing, else, long notes, everything and else, pretty much. Yeah, it's yeah. on the string. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But like, I think in um, if you play staccato, the bow leaves the string in right. a way. Like you start on the string and. Strength to ring, right? Yeah. Normally. Yeah. We do. <laughs> and we're going to go on to longer short notes now, which in our world is marcato. So, mm -hmm. what does marcato mean on a on a string instrument? I mean, marcato just means that I start the note with a certain attack. I would say. So an accented attack, but I guess it doesn't really matter how long it is, right? It can be no. short or it can be long. Yeah, exactly. I think it's about the beginning of the note. Okay. The articulation at the beginning and then the short, the note can be longer or shorter. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, we see, in sample world, we see marcato longs and marcato shorts and things, and it, it gets a bit confusing. I guess maybe like a long one is just a, a whole bow. Maybe. Could be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. This would not be my kato. Yeah. It is, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes we also see something like martelle, which to me was always just basically a really accented marcato. Is that yeah, right? Or? I think so. I think martelle is describes the technique as. And Makato is the result in a way, and it could. Oh, ah, okay. It's just like our way of like. Okay. And presumably then it means it's just reserved for kind of loud notes. Yes. Yeah, like loud like verse, yeah. A lot of like very good contact at the beginning of the note. And, and in, in context of, say, performance, would it be something that where there's already high energy and then yes. you're, you have a real body motion to a martelet rather than just nice play. You know? Yeah, yeah totally. Okay, makes sense. So the next thing on our list of short notes is uh, portato. I don't know if you've ever heard of the word portato before. Yes, actually. it's um, Portato would mean playing more than one note on one bow. Okay. For example, something like... <laughs> Right, yeah, I get it. That's, I mean, that sounds like our portato samples that we have. Yeah, and, and then, you know, yeah. like it can be shorter, like more articulated or very soft. Depending Got it, yeah. On the yeah, we, we, love, we love that where we stick uh, portato long and portato short in different, <laughs> in different boxes and different patches. It makes a lot of sense. Um, but how would we, I mean, I mean, I'm thinking as a composer now, how would mm -hmm. I write this for you to play on a page? Would I, would I just write a tenuto mark, for example? Is it the same thing as a portato, just to put a, a line over it? Not really. Like, you definitely need a slur to okay. um, show me that I'm supposed to use only one bow. So, it's still, so it has to be connected with yes. a slur? Yes. I mean, yeah. if it was only tenuto marks, I would play... Okay. Detache exactly. long notes, really. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so with a, a slur and tenuto marks, then yes. we get portato. Yeah. It's like because a weird the mass slur equation. shows me, yeah. okay, on one bow, and the tenuto marks tell me that it's not legato, yeah. but. Okay. And I have to separate them in 
Got it. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Right. So we've had off the string staccatos and short notes and on the string short mm-hmm. notes, but there's still a whole sort of category of other short notes that maybe don't even use the bow at all, right? True. Something like pizzicato, for example. Yes. It's a super common articulation mm-hmm. for people to use. So do we just get one type of pit? Is that it? Well, I mean, there's like, yeah, one type in the sense of, yeah, I use my it is plucked, fingers yeah. and yeah, I yeah. pluck the string, yeah. <laughs> but then there's lots of ways how I can change the sound or the color. Right. Like, I can... Um, do it with a lot of resonance, mm-hmm. or I can also... Very like dry one. Also, um, the sound really changes depending on where I pluck the string. For example, if I go very close to the bridge, okay. it's very different than yeah here, right? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, we just don't really get many of these options with pizzicato. Mm-hmm. We don't get like different. Uh, other than maybe damp, we don't have like vibrato or resonant or yeah, vibrato soul, actually ponticello or anything. It has a huge effect on pizzicato, like yeah. It's funny the other way around. Sometimes you you'll get one with a vibrato that you don't want. You yeah. can't take it away. <laughs> <laughs> but there is something that we do have in sort of sample world which is snap pizzicato, or sometimes it's called like Bartok pizzicato. Yeah, he invented it, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, can you give us an, like a short example of what mm-hmm. that's like? Or even if there's different types of that kind of thing. I only know one, I mean. Okay. It's kind cello. of a special effect. Yeah, yeah I definitely. Guess we don't want to hurt the cello, but then... It's the, okay, it just gets out of tune very fast. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah, well, the next thing I was going to ask was not necessarily hurting the cello, but hurting the bow, because we also have colenio, like short notes with the back of the bow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, are, are they kind of, is there any variance for those? I mean, presumably they're a bit like a spiccato. Yeah, this is pretty much... Spiccato. Much yeah. Maybe you yeah. can try to do Even ricochet. Even ricochet colonia. That's, that's a cool one. Yeah. But actually... Yeah, we, we, can we do have this too. It doesn't go count in a short notes. Oh, Although yeah, maybe right. we could have a whole thing where we do back of the bow, staccato, <laughs> and, and then spiccato. And back then. of the bow, staccato. Well, yeah. let me try. This is not very doesn't work. convincing. But you could have made... What about a back of the bow, marcato? Surely that's still... Really, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, no, we'll give up. That's that's not being sampled anytime soon. Okay. No. <laughs> Good. And then I'm just trying to think, to finish off, are there any other kind of wild short articulations that we get on string instruments? Like, um, I'm thinking of something like Santander, you know, where arpeggio kind of bowing that technically counts as a short note. Ah, yes, I mean, kind of. But I'm not sure if I can show this now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, I guess something like that is more on violins, but. Yeah, it's um, easier on the violin. Yeah. Are there any others, or are we missing any? Or? I can't think of anything right now. I okay. Think we've done. So that the covers us. Thing. No one can sample any more short <laughs> notes because we know them all now. Good. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, you should know. You know your boxes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but then I just get given the boxes. So, yeah. <laughs> well, now Clara and I have covered all the possible short articulations in this episode. In the next episode, we're going to put them all into practice and work on a short piece of music where Clara can help me decide on which articulation is the best to use. Join us on the next one to hear the results and see how I get on programming it all back up with samples. <laughs>